I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. Joining me in the studio today is Pavlo Sheremeta. He is the former Ukrainian economy minister. Hello, Mr. Sheremeta. Hello, Welcome to the studio. Thank you. In the last three years, where has the Ukrainian economy improved? And what, you know, what sectors and what sectors have been lagging behind? Well, obviously, these uh, three years were probably the toughest in the Ukrainian, uh, recent Ukrainian history. We lost territory, we lost uh, serious uh, sectors of economy, uh, money generating, export generating, hard currency gen generating. And yet we survived and actually even growing uh, in 2016, which is, I would say, short of a miracle. We all want to grow much faster, of course, and that is the goal that we should be uh, putting ahead of us, 8 to 10 percent instead of 2 percent. But again, 2 percent looks much better than minus uh, 6 or 7 percent in, uh, in 14 and 15, respectively. Uh, so what are these sectors? Uh, agriculture is growing almost miraculously year after year. I mean, why miraculously? Because every year it has a record uh, harvest. Uh, I mean, usually we will have a record harvest and then two or three years of, uh, of downfall. Uh, during the last three years, it was always a record harvest. Uh, IT is picking up, uh, well, based on, uh, I would say, excellent Ukrainian uh, uh, primary education, uh, good level of English. Uh, it could be better, should be better, but still, you know, you know not bad. Uh, and, and kind of, you know, mathematical, I would say, kind of uh, mind that, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, you know, typical for the, for the Ukrainian, I would say even kids. I mean, the mathematics is still taught uh, quite well. So uh, these sectors are probably the biggest winners. Uh, I wish services would be, pick up faster because uh, uh, th there is where we have the, the largest gap. Uh, services and small business, because small business is still generating only about 13% of uh, GDP. It should be around 40%. So the the gap is there, the opportunity is there. That's why I'm quite optimistic in the in the in the future growth. Uh, of course, bearing for uh, unexpected uh, events, uh, political and or, or military. When you say service, what specific services in that industry? I mean, look, I mean, you live in Kiev, right? I mean, you uh, a part of a few streets in the very downtown. You go just, you know, just half kilometer away, kilometer away. Uh, you, I mean, I have a hard time finding a good, I mean, little, small, good restaurant, finding the dry cleaner, finding, uh, you know, the, the vegetable and fruit shop. Uh, usually the stuff that you see in abundance in, in any prosperous uh, Western and Eastern cities. I mean, it's not, it's not only in the West. I mean, it's basically everywhere where private business was, was nurtured, they've developed uh, over the centuries. Uh, here in Ukraine, we had a century, actually. I mean, 2017 marks a century when small business was, was systematically killed. And basically now we, 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 we harvest the, uh, the, the results, the implications of this. Uh, so, so simple stuff, simple stuff, you know, uh, street stuff. Uh, as, uh, uh, but when that goes up, I think it would be basically a, a quantum change uh, for, for, for Ukraine. Uh, again, because uh, many more Ukrainians should go into small business. Many more Ukrainians should basically cut themselves off the subsidies that they are basically, many of them are living now. Uh, and that's why we, I mean, in this way we can free up the, the budget uh, and, uh, and put the, the money instead of uh, subsidies, uh, uh, consumer subsidies basically, uh, put the, the, the reserves into, into infrastructure investment. Is the Ukrainian government, are they doing a good job of taking businesses from the informal economy, the non-tax-paying businesses, and you know, getting them into the more formal economy? Last year was a, a very important step in this direction, which is drastically lowering the uh, social contribution tax from about 41% to about 28%. Uh, but more needs to be done. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in, in what terms? Uh, for, first of all, demonopolization of the economy. We have sectors, industries of economy still monopolized. And obviously, in most of the cases, these are political industrial monopolies, not just industrial monopolies, uh, with, a, with, a, with a serious political backing. So it's not so easy to, to, to break them into pieces or to demonopolize the industry. That's why it takes uh, so long, actually. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, these are the steps that, uh, that still needs to be taken. 
in order to take the economy from the shadow, from the gray sector into the, into the legal one. The IMF, they delayed a $1 billion tranche of aid to Ukraine. They said because it's, it's of a trade blockade in eastern Ukraine. What Could you, for our viewers, explain what the trade blockade is in eastern Ukraine? What? <sighs> It's actually, it's, it's very important how you define this, uh, because I define it not as, not, not, not as a trade blockade. Uh, now, the major question that we have to answer is, is this a war or is this the anti-terrorist terror, uh, anti operation? Uh, in my opinion, I mean, from all the signals that I see, I mean, the intensity of the fight, the number of victims, the number of lives and soldiers uh, lost, I mean, for me, that looks like a war. I mean, it's not just an anti-terrorist operation. So if that is a war, that means that these territories are being occupied. I mean, I mean you cannot trade with the occupied territories. So it's not, it's not a trade blockade. It's basically, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a war. Uh, and uh, I think that the Ukrainian uh, political class, hopefully through the parliament, because the parliament has a good representation of virtually all the major views that are present in the Ukrainian society, should have a very good discussion. And I think they should come with a consensus, ideally. You know, so, you know, the, I would love to have, uh, you know, 400 out of 450, of, at the moment, 430 votes uh, that would clearly define what we have in, that, uh, in, the, in, in, in the East. And if the definition is that's the war, then it's not a trade blockade. It's just, you know, cutting off any kind of uh, uh, tr trade and transactions with, with the enemy, right, with the, with the occupying force. Uh, now, that discussion, back to IMF, came a little bit as a surprise, not only for IMF, but <laughs> also even for Ukrainians, uh, because it, it's already basically three years into, in, into the issue. Uh, <clears throat> IMF, IMF was, uh, was caught by surprise, uh, and I guess that is one of the reasons why it delayed the payment, because it does impact the state of, uh, of, the, of Ukrainian finance, uh, because we did have some of the companies that are now being nationalized by the, by the occupants uh, on the other side uh, that were in the Ukrainian ownership, and they were paying the taxes to the Ukrainian budget, uh, and now we lost that revenue. I personally believe that this is not a, such a big deal. Uh, you know, again, we lost huge chunk of the territory. It's not just this couple of, uh, of uh, enterprises. And, and if we are going along, then I think we can, we can stomach this. I mean, that's exactly the discussion that we had three years ago. You know, should we go to, uh, in the European Atlantic direction or Eurasian, uh, the direction led by Russia? And, and we already had that argument. We already had the discussion that, yes, we will lose large chunk of our revenue. But we are sacrificing that, well, first of all, for the short ter uh, term, because the uh, EU market is much larger and much deeper, so we can recover if we do a good job, like Poland does, like uh, uh, Czech Republic does, like Slovakia does, selling to the European uh, U uh, Union market. Uh, and uh, number two uh, is uh, <clears throat> uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you know, we do the reforms that uh, that are that, that that are needed, and and through the reforms, through the demonopolization, we grow up, nurture the new economy. Because what is basically lost is the so-called old economy, metallurgy, coal mining. Uh, I'm talking about IT as a new economy, services as a new economy. So I think this should easily uh, compensate more than compensate that uh, you know for what what we are losing. But again, that has to be put into the numbers because IMF wants to, and they, you know, they think in terms of numbers, not just in terms of ideas. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Sheremeta, for joining us. Really appreciate it. I wish we had more time. Alex, thank you very much. I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. I was in the studio today with Pablo Sheremeta. He is the former Ukrainian economy minister. Thank you.